Hi, welcome to the latest installment of Roy's Book Reviews. Today I wish to discuss with you my thoughts about The Plot by Jean Hanf Korlitz. You see a book with a title like The Plot, and of course the first question that springs to mind, or the first question that sprung to my mind anyway, is what is this plot? Jean Hanf Korlitz wrote a Grease Lightning page turner about the writing process, one that most readers will relish and fellow writers will devour. At least I know I certainly did. It's about an author turned writing professor turned freelance editor for hire because after his debut novel is a success by many of the metrics that writers aspire to achieve, it fails to lead to a lucrative writing career. Subsequent efforts by Jake are considerably less lauded um, than book number one. While working at his second career as a writing professor at a small college named Ripley, which like Jake is also on a downward slope, he has a student uh, one semester named Evan Parker, who will come to change his life. While the failing trajectory of the school is irreversible, Jake has a reversal of fortune in store for him. That is because Evan reveals the plot of the book he's writing to his professor. The cocky student claims to be working on a surefire hit, guaranteed to become a bestseller, land him on Oprah's couch, get a movie adaptation with an A-list Hollywood director, etc., etc. It doesn't even need to be written by anyone particularly talented at writing. The ingenuity of the plot alone will guarantee its fate. After being coaxed to not only produce sample pages of what he has written so far, but also to reveal the plot of his work in progress, Jake must admit to himself, though not to his smug student Evan, who excels at being unlikable, that the story does indeed sound like a can't-miss literary phenomenon. Um, several years pass. Jake has moved on to the freelance editing stage of his uh, career with reasonable doubt that an ongoing career as a traditionally published author is behind him. Um, when he learns that his former student died not very long after taking his class. The legacy left behind by Evan is that of a tavern owner rather than an enormously successful author, um, as his um, book um, outline had promised um, that he would become. The book that was supposed to be a bona fide hit has not been published, perhaps was not even written beyond the small portion of the first draft that Jake had critiqued years earlier. Now, what is Jake to do with this information? and his particular skill set, just what you might expect. He writes the book himself, which is not to say he plagiarizes it, since other than his memory of the sample chapter and a verbal plot synopsis, he has nothing to work from but his own talent. Uh, that plus a plot with such a clever twist that all the glory to come from mul multiple print runs and weeks spent perched the top bestseller list um, is a certainty. It doesn't even need to be particularly well written. But since Jake happens to be an excellent writer, once he has the right plot at his disposal, Crib is every bit the success story that it was promised to be. As his rejuvenated writing career reaches the stratosphere, lucky breaks continue to come his way when he meets a beautiful woman destined to quickly become his girlfriend and then his wife. It is all too good to be true, and sure enough, the balloon is popped when Jake receives the first of what will be many menacing notes. The anonymous sender knows that Jake is not the one who came up with the plot of the book that readers can't get enough of. Jake has been found out, though not by Evan, who is no longer living, so presumably by someone who knew Evan. Someone who does not appreciate that Evan's story was stolen by Jake. Someone who, for unknown reasons, wants Jake to confess, or else. Or else Jake's life will be made hell 
in incremental degrees unless he figures out who is tormenting him and how to go about stopping it. After all, he's not a bad guy. He did what any writer would have done. He wrote a book that basically demanded to be written. And there was nothing that Evan could do about it anymore, but there was something that Jake could do. Why deprive the world of a fantastic story when you are capable of bringing it to light? It's not stealing if nobody misses what has been taken. No great plot comes without great cost in the world according to Jean Hanf Corlitz's highly enjoyable and very readable novel. My only complaint, if that is the right word, and I'm not entirely sure about that, is that I was able to correctly guess the ending of the plot. Along with being a fine novel about writers and writing, at its core, the plot is a mystery. For me, the be best mysteries are those where the author leaves enough clues that it is possible for an attentive reader to solve it, yet they are unable to because of the sub subterfuge and misdirection surrounding those clues. If I fail to glean who done it, and sometimes also how and why they done it, because the author does not provide sufficient clues, making it impossible for any reader to figure out until all is revealed at the end. Such a book is disqualified by me from being considered one of the best mysteries um, that I've read, even if overall I may have enjoyed the book. When I am able to figure out what's going on, such as was the case with the plot, I'm pleased with my skills of detection, but slightly disappointed that the author failed to get me. Of course, a great many novels are mysteries, even if they don't technically fall into that genre. If, unlike me, you favor formulaic books where you know in advance how things will work out, because that is what the formula dictates, that's another story. But non-formulaic books, whether they be a thriller or work of literary fiction or science fiction or fantasy or horror or whatever the case may be, are all mysteries at heart in that we readers go in knowing just an outline of the story, assuming that we read the cover copy or an online synopsis or perhaps somebody told us what the story is about. Um, and we need to experience the full book, um, reading it from cover to cover, in order for all of its truths to be revealed. Readers like myself pick a novel up because we want to be enlightened and surprised by it. I greatly enjoyed the plot and did find it to be enlightening, but the twist in the end uh, failed to catch me off guard. Nevertheless, I do highly recommend it especially for those who like books about books, about writers, about that highly exasperating art form known as writing, and then beyond it to the experience of being published to acclaim, or published but nobody cares and very few read your work. Another fine novel that contains a fictional story written by an author within the fictional story that we are reading is Tony and Susan by Austin Wright. You can find uh, my review of it in another video here, Roy's Book Reviews. I still have not gotten around to watching the movie adaptation of Tony and Susan, uh, which is called Nocturnal Animals. I couldn't help um, being reminded of Tony and Susan while reading the plot, comparing and contrasting them. Consider them both to be highly recommended by me. One crucial difference between them that I'll note is that while the story within the story of Tony and Susan is edge of your seat material, the storyline outside of the manuscript that a character has written is relative, relatively low stakes and low key. In the plot, on the other hand, both the inner plot and the outer plot quicken the pulse and have you rushing to get to the next chapter of either one. Um, that's about all I have to say about uh, the plot. 
I highly recommend it. I recently learned about a new book um, release called, I think it's called Yellow Face, that um, has a similar storyline to um, the plot in that an author assumes the identity of another author. In, that, in the case of Yellow Face, I believe they are friends and there's a racial component to it because I believe a, a white author is pretending to be um, an Asian author because um, the latter dies um, and the latter is the one who had the success and she had this book out. I mean, that was not published yet and um, something like that. Um, so perhaps this whole writer is pretending to be other writers or pretending um, something that they didn't write is their own, um, is becoming a trope. I recently saw a Woody Allen movie that had this kind of plot um, in it as well. It wasn't the main storyline, but it was kind of a, a one of the subplots in that um, somebody who was, had had success with their first book, um, was having trouble getting, um, a second book published and they had a friend whose, uh, manuscript they read and it was like, wow, this person wrote a great book, they're gonna really blow up, but then that person died and so the person, the guy who had one book published and was looking for a new one, took the manuscript of the guy who died, or who he thought died, um, published it under his own, own name, um, it was a big hit, but then it turns out, uh-oh, um, the guy, the fr other guy who wrote the book um, was not dead after all, he's in a coma, and he might be coming out of it, and the story kind of ends there in the movie. Um, so with Yellow Face and with the plot, we go um, beyond just... Um, the start of the story, but following them through to um, what will happen. Anyway, I'm not talking about a Woody Allen movie. I'm not talking about Yellow Face. I am talking about The Plot by Gene Hanf Kurlitz, which I highly recommend you go check out. Until next time, this is Roy of Roy's Book Reviews saying happy reading.